Hello folks, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works where we do things like private trainings, hackathons, on-demand learning that cover a wide array of, a wide array of products from Power BI to Power Apps to Azure. Um, and we like to bring videos to you um, throughout the year as well. And so if you're here, make sure you like or subscribe to the channel uh, so you can stay up to date on all free learning that we're giving out here. And in this week, what I want to do is bring to you a Power BI video about appending data. Sometimes when you're bringing data in, it's coming from multiple files, but the structure and the files are the same. And rather than going back to the original data source and trying to combine it all there, we can do it right from Power BI. So the scenario I'm bringing for you today is uh, I'm doing this because I've done it for my, my wife, who's a, a language arts teacher, where they do uh, page counts for their students. And the teachers take the names of their students, what books they read for the month or months, uh, how many pages it was, the date they completed it. And she was wanting to analyze all this data across all of the classes within the eighth grade. So she was collecting data, one of her other teachers was collecting data, and a third teacher in the eighth grade. And they were all in separate Excel files. And she said, hey, can I just bring this all into one? I don't want to copy and paste all of those different files. Is there an easier way to do this with Power BI? Because she has learned, uh, fortunately for her, how to use Power BI as well. I used to be a teacher with her. Uh, I taught math, but now I do Power BI, Power Apps. Uh, I said, yeah, we can do that. And hopefully this can kind of bring a scenario of where you can use this same kind of strategy with data that you're collecting. So enough talking about this. Let me, let me show you what we're going to do uh, and how we can get this accomplished. So I've, I've, I've pared down her data quite, quite a bit here, but just to give you an idea, let me get off the screen so you can see. Uh, for, for her classes, she's keeping track of the student ID, the name, what book they read, how many pages, the date, and the completion of a project, if they did a project. Actually, this is for Miss Williams' class. So this is Miss Williams' data she has in an Excel file, all right? Now, in her class, she's doing the similar thing, ID, book, name, pages, date. She doesn't have a completed project. So I wanted to bring this to you because some people know about uh, a pins, but they've, I've had questions from mentoring sessions that I do. I said, well, what if I have an extra column in one of the files that the other one doesn't have? Or what if the column names are different? Is that gonna, is that gonna mess things up with this append process? Well, yes and no. So let's see what occurs if we do it this way. So I'm going to come on over into Power BI where I've brought all of those files in already. So I've got Browning's class right here and then I also have Miss Williams class. And so we know that the column names, uh, they're not in the same order right now. So if I take a look at Miss Browning's class, she has book and then she has the name of the student. And in Miss Williams class, she has the name of the student and then she has the title of the book. So what's going to happen if we do an append here? So I'm going to start over here on Miss Browning's class. And in order to do an append, what we do is we're going to go to the home ribbon. And then over on the far right hand side, there is an append queries. And so when I select append queries, it's going to say, OK, you want to append another table to this, basically like copying it and pasting it over or a cut and paste, so to speak. And how many tables do you want to do this to? Well, I just want to do it to two tables, but we could do three or more if we wanted. And what I want to do is I want to put Miss Williams' class on top of or underneath Miss Browning's class. So when I pick Miss Williams' class and I hit OK, notice what we have. Student ID, book, name. Now, ah, book, we're getting nulls here. Why are we getting nulls for the book column? Well, because on Miss Williams' class, there is no column called book. She had her column called title. Well, where did that title information go from Miss Williams class? Well, it went over here at the far right hand side. And so because Miss Browning did not have a title column, her original records, a new column is produced called title. But because she did not have a title column, all of those values get replaced to nulls. The same thing happened with completed project. Miss Browning did not have a completed project, so it put it as nulls. So one thing we're seeing right here is that if you have extra columns from one of the tables, whether the one you're appending to or the one you're appending from, you will get nulls if it didn't exist in both of them. So how you want to execute that and decide what to do with the nulls, if you just get rid of the column, replace the nulls with whatever value, but the append process still worked. And more importantly, the order of the columns had no bearing whatsoever. Let's take a look at that. So if I come on over, and here's Miss Browning's class. Remember, it was student ID, book, 
and then name. And on Miss Williams, it was student ID, name, and then title. So name was her second column, Adam, Brooklyn, Nate. Well, when we do the append, that's okay that it was the second column. It's looking for the name of the column, which in this case is called name, and we still get the names in the appropriate section, Adam, Brooklyn, and Nate. So we're seeing a few different things that, you know, if the files were exactly the same, the columns were in the right order, they all had the same names, you really don't put much thought into it. But sometimes that's not how the data is collected. You don't want to go back into the Excel file, whatever files you're bringing in and make those modifications. So now the question becomes, all right, Matt, how do I fix this? So book and Miss Williams had title, how can I get them into the same column? Well, we have a few different options. Option number one, is I could come back over to Miss Williams class where it currently says title and I'm going to change this over. I'm going to double click on title and I'm now going to call it book. All right, so I change it to title, I call it to book and now if I go to Miss Browning's class, we are good to go. Now it puts it right back into the book title um, because of that append process. So you can go back and you can modify them. Other things you can do is I just did a regular append you can also do append queries as new. What that does is any changes you make to the two separate files, it makes a brand new query for you. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna get rid of this appended query. I'm also gonna, so this is the original Browning's class. I'm gonna go back to Miss Williams' class, change her book back to title as well. So now we're right back to where we started to begin with. And so if I do something different, which is append queries as new, come over here, append queries as new and it's going to say all right well what two tables you're trying to do this to so i'm going to go browning class as well as miss williams class i'll hit ok and it creates a brand new query for me right here now what this query is going to do is this appending of both will occur with whatever transformation so at the the last transform i do on browning class i can do any transforms i do here and then the result of that and the result of all transformations I do on Williams, then once all those results are done, then the append process happens. So they're kind of like independent of each other and they wait for all the transforms and then they do the final append. So for example, now if I go back to, so if we look at append one, we still have that book issue here. So let me go back to Miss Williams class, change her title to book. We'll get rid of it here. Now if I go back to append one, now we have our settings here. So it's two ways to approach the problem. The first one with the append is it does the append and then all the transforms you do happen after that, so to speak. Here you can do the transform separately, then this append is dependent on all of those transforms as two separate ones. So hopefully this brought some new insights into append, whether you've used it in the past or maybe you've never used it and you're like, yes, I can now save time. Don't have to go back to the original tables, get them all cleaned up before the append happens. Um, there's also another option to do an append from folder where we can put all of our files into a folder and then we point to the folder, we point to what files we want appended and then it does the appends. And then anytime a new file gets added to that folder, the beautiful thing is I never have to come back into the query editor. I can just hit refresh, it picks up the new file and the append automatically happens. So hopefully I'll bring that video to you in the next few weeks. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. Uh, and again, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like or subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one.